Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. My name is Lou McCoy, joined in studio once again by the legendary Tiborosaurus Rex. Why, well, howdy, everyone out there in podcast land, whatever that may be. And the beautiful and talented Miss Casey Day, pushing the buttons and being our uh, the, the third wheel to keep us grounded in whatever reality might be. Hi, guys. Before the break, we were discussing, well, quite a few things, actually, but we were trying to get to the point of discussing long-range tactical scopes and all the different flavors and shapes and sizes and varieties that they come in and what separates the good from the garbage and everything in between. Before we do get to that, though, we have to make the disclaimer that these are all just our opinions, ladies and gentlemen, and take it all with a grain of salt. So if I say that a certain optic may be mechanically inferior, that is my opinion. I haven't done any... uh quantitative analysis on these things using scientific instrumentation is based on my own personal observation and uh, you know the collective observation of other people who I know who in, and trust in the industry and in the craft so just be advised it's just an opinion so the teams of lawyers can just stay in their little uh, cages and don't <laughs> unlock them yet please although these are just opinions some opinions do weigh more heavily than others because of experience and expertise and that is why your opinion here today mr rex is going to matter to quite a few people out there in listener land yeah a lot of people have been asking about the scope hierarchy that's talking about which scopes are the best And uh, which brands should I stay away from? A lot of people have a lot of money to spend. They work hard for their money and they want to get right to the point and they don't want to screw around and uh, potentially waste money on something they could have gotten more out of, right? Exactly. And as with a lot of the things that we discuss that have to do with long range shooting, it comes back to the application and what you're going to be using the certain equipment for. Absolutely. Good point you bring up. Uh, when We're talking specifically about long range precision shooting scopes for like sniper rifle type applications, long range c- competition shooting, PRS shooting, things like that. Uh, and we're talking about a tactical scope for long range. That's what we're talking about. There's a certain set of uh, criteria that needs to be meant to be considered a tactical rifle scope. And just to briefly reiterate that, we did videos on this on our YouTube channel, Tibor Source Rex there, see? And uh, we did a lot of reviews and uh, tutorials talking about the various selection criteria required to uh, accomplish the mission of hitting a small target at extreme long range. And um, just to reiterate the main pointers, when we're talking about a long range precision rifle scope that's suitable for tactical applications, you need something with externally adjustable target turrets. That means you can adjust your scope on the turrets easily without having to remove a turret cap. Those turrets need to be able to have the zero scale, the, the numbers on them need to be slipped to zero. So you can zero it at 100 yards and you can uh, have the numbers read zero. Uh, so that's the primary criteria is we're talking about the turrets. Also, when you're talking about tactical scopes, we're talking about a reticle that will also be used to apply hold off values, whether that be for windage or spin drift or things of that nature, leading a target. Um, so tactical scopes are optics designed for that application. So when we're talking about this, I'm not really talking about hunting scopes. I'm not even talking about maybe target shooting scopes. Target shooting scopes are going to be a little bit different in that all you really need to do is have, um, you know, you don't need a ranging reticle per, per se, because you're shooting at a piece of paper at a known distance. So tactical scopes require a reticle that is useful in order to determine range Uh, to the target and to use that for lead applications and such. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about these tactical rifle scopes. So we're very, very much narrowing the field down in this whole discussion to that specific application. A lot of criteria to make these the specific scopes for this particular application, as you just said. And it just so happens to be your field of expertise, which is why your opinion will hold a little bit of weight here today, sir. Sure. And I, I suppose, like, you know, if I don't talk about a Trigicon ACOG, that's because it's not a long range precision scope. It's an awesome scope. And in its you know, it's designed for different application, and it, it's probably a tier one optic for its application. We're not going to be talking about aim points, and we're not going to be talking about, 
you know, like a varmint shooting scope or a hunting scope, just to reiterate that so everyone knows what we're talking about here. So we're zeroing in on a very specific purpose for these scopes and whichever rifle you choose to stick them on for whatever your purpose may be. Hopefully legal and lawful purposes. Within the constitution of... I suppose we're, this is all over the world, so... Yeah, wherever righteousness can be magnified through the application of firearms power. Right. I like that. That's poetic. <laughs> and I'm not talking about them aluha fudge bar guys either. <laughs> Just in case anyone's wondering, not to be a racist or nothing, but, you know, I do get the question a lot. But no, I'm not talking about those guys. This is for purely educational and fun-loving purposes only, folks. Absolutely. So with that in mind, Mr. Rex, you kind of alluded to this earlier. You talked about a Schmidt and Bender that was keyword was your favorite scope up until about two, three years ago. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good example of how this thing evolves so quickly over time, is you've got to keep in mind that, that by the time you hear this, it could very well change. So currently, we're in mid-2016, and all these different industries are continuously evolving. They're hiring new people. They're getting different uh, tooling. They're employing different technology, and they're redesigning these objects continuously. So when we're talking about this, keep that in mind because things do change. An example of that would be the Schmidt and Bender PM2, which has long been kind of the world standard amongst professional tactical shooters. I'm talking military snipers specifically. You know, a lot of the European nations have used this for a long time. The Schmidt and Bender PM2 is made in Germany. It's a very, very good scope. This would There's several different tiers of scopes. We'll, we'll call them tier one, two, and three. Tier one being the best, right? Yeah, tier one being your absolute class act stuff that you can put, uh, you can depend with with your life. Uh, tier three being maybe suitable for a hobby, maybe. Tier two being pretty respectable, but not the best. And just because something isn't in a tier one, that's just because it happens to be for this particular application. Right. So we're going to categorize these scopes in, into a hierarchy of, you know, which tier they slip into. And I'll, I'll get in a little more specific on why they fit into that range and, and, and the different criteria would put it there. And um, so it is funny, too, because there's different features that might be like, for example, there's some scopes that might be very, very rugged but they might not have the feature set that, or, or maybe a glass clarity that would knock the glass quality of them to a tier two level, but the ruggedness might be a tier one level. So this isn't like just a linear thing. It's dynamic and uh, it's a complex machine. And we're talking about a lot of different things. With that in mind, do you want to start from the top and work our way down or start from the bottom and work our way Let, up? Let's start from the top. Everyone wants to know what is the good stuff, right? The cream of the crop, ladies yeah, and Yeah, and people have gotten frustrated with me over time because I kind of was hesitant to condemn certain brands, even though I really want to. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to be nice about this, so we'll approach this scientifically as possible, okay? And I'll, I'll give credit where credit is due. So on the tier one, you have, all right, this is professional grade. This is military grade optics. Like if I was in charge of like, uh, designating a long range precision scope for the U.S. Special Forces or something like this, or the U.S. military or the uh, uh, sniper scout program, uh, this scope would be, you know, worthy of those applications where people need these to save lives, okay? And also be durable enough to go through hell and back. Yes. You have to throw it out of a helicopter sometimes. And, and the optic is always the weak point of the weapon system, it's, uh, mechanically speaking. It is a fragile instrument. So ruggedness is going to be a uh, part of this equation. Also, mechanical precision in terms of adjusting the scope is very, very important in this. Um, and what we're talking about there is when you turn it, uh, the, the dials, you know, on the scope, the, the turrets on your scope, if you're adjusting seven minutes of angle or seven mils or whichever denominations you're using, that needs to be exactly what you said, because you're going to be calculating a firing solution. And if you, you know what I'm saying? If, if you can't translate the firing solution to the optic and the weapon system, then it doesn't matter. You know what it I mean? Doesn't. So that's very important is mechanical precision in terms of tracking of the scope. Okay. That's to pack, pass a box test if you're going to test it that way. But we're talking about it needs to go where you put it. When you put 10 mils on there, it's got to be on 10 mils every time. Not nine out of 10 times every single time. If it's a tier one scope, it's got to be there 100% of the time. And if you're shooting 10,000 rounds out of the rifle, every single time it needs to be there. That's the criteria to be a tier one scope is in terms of mechanical precision and the tracking of the turrets. Consistency. 
Yeah, absolute consistency. We're talking about also about glass clarity because that's important. There are certain things that happen optically which can deform and like change an image. Um, when you're talking about uh, the, the glass quality of a scope, clarity becomes important too. Um, in a lot of applications, it isn't because if you're just using the center of the crosshairs, for example, okay, that's always going to be the same place on the lens. So if you got the crosshair centered in on a certain point on the target and you're always using the center of the crosshairs to shoot, it's not going to be an issue. But in tactical rifle scope applications, you might be using the uh, hash marks in the scope. You might be using the mills. You might be actually aiming at the target using the lower edge of the lens of the scope, okay? Because you're holding over or something. So the whole lens has to be of highest quality then. Yeah, it has to be It has to be polished correctly and it has to be contoured correctly so that it's not distorted towards the edge of the lens. Because what will happen is so in a scope that's equipped with a reticle, let's say a mil dot reticle, and you want to hold five mils high with your mil dot reticle, you're holding over the top. So you're holding on the lower dot towards like the, not the edge of the scope, but getting over there. If the lens is uh, screwed up, right? We'll call it screwed up for these applications because in a tier one scope, it should be absolutely perfect. Hopefully that's the ideal, right? But they call it optical vignetting, um, which is an effect that happens, which is just like there's op optical aberrations that happen in the scope that is, it doesn't contribute to the clarity of the scope. It's, it's distortion. Okay. And if your image is distorted, you might be thinking you're holding five mils, but it might be like 5.3 because it's not good anymore because you're on the edge of the lens and the lens wasn't shaped properly. So that's another thing we're considering too. And we're talking about tier one optics in order to fit in that category, that stuff has to be done correctly. And also the ruggedness and quality control of the scope has to be such that it is going to work every time. All the different features, when you can adjust the, the magnification setting. If it's a variable power scope, you're going to need the ability to adjust the magnification and it's not going to throw off your point of impact because all those different parts inside the scope need to be centered properly and they need to be tight enough together to where it's not going to be inconsistently uh, you know, changing your point of impact. And that's what happens in some of the lower grade optics is you get zero to, at 10 power and then you back off to three power or, or you crank it up higher and your point of impact is different because you mechanically moved that lens set in the scope by adjusting your lens, you know, your variable power, and now it's off. So those are all different things we're talking about. When we're talking about tier one, everything is working properly. It's working so good that you can trust Let's say you're going to negotiate to get a hostage out with a bullet, which happens sometimes, right? You're a police sniper or something, and you got to actually hit exactly where you're aiming so you don't kill the hostage. Or if you have to take out a bad guy who's about to do something incredibly terrible, you know, and you have to put him down right now because if he gets away, he's going to go do terrible things. Um, those applications, everything has to work. You don't really get a second chance. And after you fire that first round, you don't, an inanimate target, have the opportunity to always correct that because he's going to run away. He might employ the run away technique. <laughs> okay? After you fire the first shot. So, with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, and as we had in our disclaimer before this, opinions, and we all have them, it is worth saying, though, that your opinion on this matter, Mr. Rex, is worth listening to because you come to the table with a lot of experience and a lot of expertise and as you can see, our criteria for measuring these scopes is pretty rigid. So coming to the top of the tier with tier one is Schmidt and Bender still. OK, we got some cliffhanger and people there. They're wondering about their Schmidt and Bender. They're worrying because I was about to say something about Schmidt and Bender. Yeah, yeah. And then but we then I went on that bunny trail. See, so where do they still sit on your list? <laughs> 